My name's Stephen Mosley. I was at Bowlby High School. I, had a, I came in the second year. I had a problem integrating with the classes because although I only came from Sheffield to Doncaster, the accent was severely violent and <laughs> different. I was what people call a Dedar. Nadi, now I die, they're going down the road. So my accent needed re educating, so I had two weeks of English. And I can't remember the teacher for the life. It could have been Miss Watson, did she? I don't know. Anyway, I did. I had two weeks uh, and a, a couple of scraps where the cock of the school and the second one wanted to sort themselves out. So I got in trouble for that in the first week. Our headmaster was, we used to call him Batman, Mr. Martin. So he got me to one side and said, we don't fight here. And said, neither do I. It's uh, just a self, self-protection mode. Um, so it did take a, bit, a good six months to get settled as such. But my father was a publican as well. We'd moved into Sanford Road Barracks. Uh, he came from the army. Uh, he was a drum major. And then they made him trumpet major and bandmaster. So I had access to all musical instruments in the uh, practice hall at uh, Sanford Road. And then he became a publican. So I was traveling from the three legs hotel in the centre of Doncaster, opposite Clock Corner, from the Three Legs Hotel and then I caught the Balby bus towards Wynn Avenue. And then a couple of years later that became, Three Legs became the orchestra and that, we moved into the Spread Eagle on the, is it East Leith Gate or St Seppel Gate, I can't, West Leith Gate, that's the one. And so the bus stop was still the same. Every morning I had to travel from the centre of town to Bowlby, which I was quite happy because I was happy at school. Although some people aren't, but I was. It was a great, great time in my life. And I had access to uh, music, which was my, my favourite, my hobby at the time. Uh, but we had, for me, we had some cracking teachers, characters they were. You know, some you don't some you don't smile, otherwise you got a you caught a eraser as they called them. We called them rubbers. Yeah. My father had a jukebox in the pub, so I was inundated with sounds. And then a band called the Small Faces cropped up, and uh, I went school the next day he mentioned this to a friend and he says oh let's form a band so i said well i've got to learn how to play guitar so we went to uh, i think her name was miss tuckett the music teacher she's very elderly lady lovely lovely lady very polite and she allowed us in uh, break times to practice the guitars that she had in the classroom which kicked us off and I was also drumming so I said I want to be a drummer but I want to learn guitar as well so they were the school was very good they let, let us do that and uh, in fact of one of one of my school reports it does mention that uh, my uh, lessons were being diverted elsewhere which was to music rather than the uh, English or maths or history Especially history and geography, I wasn't really bothered about it. But uh, yeah, m music was a big influence. And uh, then we used to have school, we used to have the school uh, dances, and we played a couple of them. This I'm going back, this is 66, 67. And uh, we, the band was called The Cleft. And we put featuring. Alan Waite, because he, he was a singer them days, he split the band from the singer. So, but it was called The Cleft, which was K-L-E, 
P H double T. Slightly different. We had to be different. But uh, that that put us on the road to stardom, <laughs> which was uh, we played a couple of them, and then we played the underprivileged children's uh, school at Balby, which we did for free, of course. But uh, and then eventually we moved into working clubs, working men's clubs. So the uh, yeah, school time we tend to get pushed backwards <laughs> as against the music took over. So when, once we got a little bit more proficient from learning at school, I uh, definitely got hooked on what they call the blues. And uh, in the 60s, mid 60s, it turned into, uh, we studied all what the, what the black guys were doing in South America amazing music uh, which was the beginning the roots of rock and roll so that really got us foot stomping and then a lot of uh, music papers called as we came along with loads of others like Led Zeppelin and top bands Cream they called it white man's blues uh, so we got influenced by that and we played a lot of blues a lot of uh, a lot of innovation there there was that them years a couple of years or whatever there was and then uh, I left I left that band the cleft and then uh, funny enough a, a, um, a classmate at school he, he, he jumped in as drummer with the cleft uh, Graham Reynoldson but I'll let him introduce himself because it'll only be fair uh, so I'm leaving the band we formed another band. We went through a period of playing soul music, uh, but we were searching for something and we still loved the blues. And then the top ranking Doncaster had uh, had good top bands on and we went to see Pink Floyd. So that changed his, changed his route altogether. We went into uh, what was then called underground that we did and uh, I remember getting my school report from uh, Oslin Avenue and a few teachers seemed to say Stephen is being diverted away from his uh, his lessons which really was music they were right I can't com I can't complain about that you know so uh, and then uh, <clears throat> as I say I left that group we formed a group called Pot Belly Pot for the old wacky backy and belly because I were fat but never mind, it, it, we had a good few years with that and then uh, I left that band and uh, the band changed the name into uh, Cowboys Don't Cry, a good local band, excellent they were. Yeah, and uh, I just kept moving on and I, of course playing guitar as well as drums, I, I finished up busking or playing the folk clubs, whatever turned up, I, you know, I got quite a good social life but uh, my education was slipping back because I was putting more into music than I should have been at that, that age. But uh, that, that's it. And I'm now 70 year old. I'm still busking. <laughs> but in between, I was, uh, I was a head chef for 45 years to guarantee myself an income. Yes, down south where I'd gone, they, they all paid bonuses. Mm. This was 1974, and it was like four, four and a half hundred pound bonus. It was a lot of money, yeah. uh, and then it got to 1978. It was great because we had three months off. So when I got my bonus, it was get an aeroplane, travel yeah. where I want for three months, mm -hmm. and he was happy I was coming back, and I was happy because I got a flat included with the job. So I, everything I stayed there for years till I bought my own place. Um, yeah, that was that, that was good in Newquay. That was, yeah. So I could always I played the local pubs, clubs. You know, I was busking outside a pub one day. Never forget that Newquay. And uh, the Sailors Arms, the famous Sailors Arms, and. Uh, I, I was skint, that's what it was, and I thought, oh, I'll get a few bob in for a pasty and a pint. And my mate was with me from Doc, because he, he, he had a Edlington garden nursery, John Pickering. He'd come down for a year, and uh, I was 
plain there and we've got, got enough for two pasties and two two bottles of steam they call it and he went in the pub and got it and then the landlord come out of the pub he says you're playing Saturday you know I says you are he says you're playing 25 pounds Saturday afternoon yeah he said one o'clock till three whatever so you're on <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway there was only there was one a fellow musician who uh, he didn't seem to like that. He says, you've stolen my gig. I says, who are you? <laughs> but anyway, they were, they were fun times. Great. And so, yeah, I've always played every year. Still playing, even now, 70 year old. And still go busking sometimes. Or sometimes I've done it for charity. You know, uh, mainly I've done it for the deaf. Because uh, I'm involved with their culture. You know, and uh, obviously, cancer in children, that's a definite, you know, that's usually the one that gets uh, the donations. Um, but yeah, still play music, well influenced, all from Oswin Avenue. We used to get famous people come in, I remember a couple. Uh, Paul McCartney came in with a guy, and it, it was, I must tell you, it was before he became a vegetarian. Because he had fish, I'm sure it was, and uh, he had a glass of white wine, and I said to my partner in crime, my business partner, I said, if he pays by cheque, don't bank it, and uh, I left it at that. Anyway, it comes to sixty, about sixty-two pounds, something like that, and I went back about three days later. I said, have you got that cheque? I'll frame it and put it in the pub with a picture of him, you know, he dined here on such a day, and she says, no, I've banked it. So, that was a nice little curse I let out on the day. And then another day, I was working in a restaurant in Newquay, Cornwall, and it, quite busy, and who should walk in but Paul Daniels, and I think it was his wife then, uh, Debbie, and, uh, he had his meal and everything, and as he's going, leaving to go out the door downstairs and then go out, as he's going down the stairs, the waitress said, well, he never left a tip. And his little head popped back up, well, little leg, it was a big head, it popped back up, and he said, third packet of polo mints, down. So the barmaid got the third packet of polo mints, opened it up, and there was a screwed up five pound note inside. And that was a tip. So that's a couple of things. Uh, uh, you know, you get famous people. Some are nice, some are not. We shan't mention the ones that are not. Uh, I'll sign off here about Bobby High School. Great school. I'm going to sing in a song. Because I've got some friends who used to go to that school. And some of them get quite, quite depressed now and again. And uh, I've lost a few. So I'm going to sing in a song. Which I suppose now it's become an anthem. For those depressed and all I can say to those who are depressed, please go and talk to somebody. So I'll, I'll attempt to sing this song for you. The day is long And the night The night you're all When you're sure you've had enough of this life, well, hang on. Don't let yourself go. Everybody cries. Everybody hurts sometimes. No, no, you're not alone. The 
days and nights alone Sometimes everybody cries Everybody hurts Everybody Hey, hold on, speak about it.